Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church, Hastings, Michigan online service. We're glad that you could join us this day. Wanted to share some announcements with you this day. We hope that you are able to join us for our annual meeting that will be coming up on the 9th of July. It's coming up quickly, folk. It's going to be here before we know it. In fact, if I count right, that's two Sundays from this Sunday. Wanted to also share with you that our Grace Auto Show is coming along well. We're putting together a little bit of choir, so you are welcome to join us for that. Nursery is available at the 1045 service. Time and talent inventory is available in the gathering area. And there are several copies of the annual report available in the gathering area for you to view ahead of the annual meeting. So we hope that you can look at those. And finally, early uh, announcement here, save the date. The Social Activities Committee is inviting you to a concert at the Serial City Concert Band at, and a tour of the Kellogg Manor House. That's sometime in August. Uh, I think it's August 27th. If that date changes, we'll of course make that change, but we wanted you to be aware of that early on. Uh, house tours are from noon until 3 p.m. and the concert is from 3 until 5 p.m. Have a wonderful blessed day. May we enjoy worship at this time.
Thank you, Cindy. We welcome you this day and indeed are blessed with the gift to have almost twice as many as we sometimes have in our worship service today. That's kind of fun. Uh, so you can tell it's summer. Everyone wants to get here and then go out. So glad that you're here, but mostly here to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, to hear the good news. Unfortunately, um, sometimes that truth hurts or that truth is a sword and divides. We see that fathers against son and mother against daughter and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law and sometimes that truth divides and we hope that's not the case here at our congregation but the truth we see does get revealed and it goes and sometimes divides we pray that the holy spirit continues to unite and guide us together as one people of god as we come and worship and give praise this day let us stand and share our opening sentences found on page two. O oh Lord, open our lips, and, and our mouths shall proclaim your grace. <clears throat> Blessed God, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, <clears throat> that we may rejoice and be glad of all our days. Give praise to the Holy Trinity, our true God, who gives us life, salvation, and resurrection.
Good morning. A reading from Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughingstock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is not something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O oh Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 69. Surely, for your sake, I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Seal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. I put on sackcloth also, and became a byword among them. Those who sit at the gate murmur against me, and the drunkards make songs about me. But as for me, this is my prayer to you, at the time you have set, O Lord. In your great mercy, O God, answer me with your unfailing help. Save me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Let me be rescued from those who hate me, and out of the deep waters. Let not the torrent of waters wash over me, neither let the deep swallow me up. Do not let the pit shut its mouth upon me. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn in your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift to answer me, cry in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me, because of my enemies deliver me. A reading from Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as, Jesus, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like this, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like this, like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be, be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the twelve, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more they will malign those of his household. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet none of them will fall to the, to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all accounted for. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone therefore who acknowledges me before others, I also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My friends, I stand near the Luther seal this day to remind us that Martin Luther had to nail 95 theses to a door, which was proclaiming a truth that a lot of people are not comfortable with. That truth create pain and agony and division in fact, it fractured the church, and some will say it keeps fracturing because the truth keeps being revealed. Even in the own, our own Lutheran church, we have seen a fracturing several times, not just in the United States, but worldwide, over issues that seem to just be so sinful that we have that division. But leaders of the church have chosen to fight the good battle of telling the truth. I will not fight a person just for fighting. I will not enter a fight just for argument's sake. But I will stand up for the truth. And that's what Martin Luther did. And I hope that all of us do. It says here in scripture that relationships were broken, that mother-in-law is against daughter-in-law, that mother and daughter are against each other, and father and son. All of these relationships were broken because truth was sometimes not being told, and then sometimes truth was being told, and then it erupted. I hope that when we tell the truth, there is not an eruption that the truth continues to be told so that there is the gospel that all are welcome, all are included, all know God's love through Jesus Christ. For you see, the Holy Trinity surrounds us with love. And the Holy Trinity surrounded Martin Luther as he nailed his 95 Theses onto the door. May we know the truth. 
and tell it freely. Let us pray. Dear God, help us always to tell the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming. See you next week. Grace, mercy, peace be to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. Wow. Not peace, but a sword. I resist this saying of Jesus. I resist it a lot, not only because it sounds so wrong on so many levels. I resist it because deep down I know I have not come to bring peace, but a sword is true. That's what happens when the truth gets told, when the truth is let loose, when the truth is finally uttered. Because when you are called to speak the truth, stand up for what you believe, a serene and untroubled reception is not always the result. Or in the words of Angie Thomas, sometimes you can do everything right and things will still go horribly wrong. The key is to never stop doing right. It's not that argument, antagonism, or aggression is intended. It's just that peace is often hard to come by when the truth ends up actually being said. And Jesus is telling the truth to his disciples. If you anticipate a lack of resistance to any truth of which I am asking you to speak, well, I have news for you, Jesus warns. The kingdom of heaven is not a tranquil or quiet existence free from disturbance and discord. No. Rather, the kingdom of heaven disrupts. The kingdom of heaven is unsettling. The kingdom of heaven upends, especially the reign that feign peace, fake peace, or pretend peace. The kingdom of heaven calls into question the rulers and systems that promise peace, but in doing so, wield a sword of terror and weapons of forced allegiance armed with what they think is power. The kingdom of heaven comes with the demands on which true peace exists and never lets go of the kind of peace God has in mind. I told someone recently, your words seem like fighting words to me. I like that we are Christians and we are about accepting all, when there is a fight, I'm willing not to fight, except for the truth, that all are welcome, all are part of the body of Christ. We find in today's Gospel reading, Jesus' truth, it's a truth that's told at its best. No sugarcoating, no bargaining, no excuses, because when you stand up and speak out for what you believe, people start falling away. Believing in Jesus, really believing in that which Jesus says, what Jesus stands for, and then admitting it is risky business. Relationships when truth is spoken will change. Relationships when one is challenged to love with kindness instead of hammering over a head, would very well end up, well, ending a relationship. That is, in part, what Jesus is saying. When you stand up for what you believe, nothing will be the same ever again. Anticipate being unfriended, unfollowed, tried, and trolled. I can remember several relationships that have been altered because of my calling, because of sharing God's grace rather than hate. I know that what I believe in, 
what I know to be God's calling to bring justice and love has trained my friendships at times and cost me, well, at least heartache and pain. I know others here at Grace and other congregations that have been in painful situations for what they stood up for, for what is right. My friend Dorothy, whose husband was put on death row for a murder he never committed, she worked for the death penalty to be ended and was successful. She tells the stories of how she threatened, how she was threatened over and over because of her work. Even though her husband was innocent, people came after her. Dorothy is now in the heavenly realm. I was blessed to have her service, but because of her, there are fewer men and women suffering with the threat of capital punishment. Women in ministry have to decide whether or not to tell the truth about sexism that they experience, knowing that in naming this truth, relationships will likely have to be adjusted, even severed, and perhaps forever changed. LG BTQ plus persons have to decide whether or not to be true to themselves in order to get a call or stay hidden a little while longer until the church finally, if ever, catches up with the principles and policy that it's supposed to endorse of supporting those who are in that life. Persons of color have to decide whether or not they name, once again, their fear of a country which systematically puts upon them racism, the racism that continues to be validated so, so frequently. And myself, a white person, white people have to decide if they will finally not just tell the truth about their privilege, but atone for it if they will ever stop assuming that saying sorry is enough. The church has to decide whether or not it will actually tell the truth of the gospel, the gospel that brings true peace to those who suffer, true peace to those who are in need of healing, True peace to those who are marginalized, to those demonized, to those who are oppressed. God's true peace realized and known in gladness and joy, fulfillment and contentness, happiness and blessedness. Or will the church, out of a fear of rocking the boat, out of a fear of death, maintain mediocrity, perpetuate its own privilege, and stay silent? When push towards God's peace, I am not sure the church really believes in an empty tomb, the reality of the resurrection, and that the kingdom of heaven can happen here and now, even in Hastings, Michigan. Far too long we have played it safe, passed over this verse as if Jesus was just in one of his inflated states, maybe a little ego. But we know, my friends, that we need to live out the gospel. That even when we give voice to the words of the psalmist, I have come a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. You know the insults I received and my shame and dishonor. My foes are all known to you. Insults have broken my heart so that I am in despair. It is zeal for your house that has consumed me. The insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. When I bumbled, I want to humble my soul with fasting. 
and they bumble and insult me for doing so. When I made sackcloth for my clothing, I became a byword to them. I am the subject of gossip for those who sit in the gate, and the drunkards make song about me. God's true people come and allow us to praise the name of the Lord with a song and magnify God with thanksgiving. When we are challenged to bring peace, my friends, in Christ, we should expect a sword because God's peace expects justice. God's peace asks for righteousness. God's peace demands value for and regard of all. And God's peace is what will save us all. Let us be empowered to share God's true peace with all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for the world in need. You entice your church to speak the truth that challenges false notions of peace. Prevail upon us with the good news of Christ's death and resurrection, that we are compelled to share the gospel with all the world. Guide and strengthen bishops Elizabeth and Craig, assistants Chrissy and David, our Synod Companions, our Savior's Lutheran Church, Edmore, First Baptist Church of Middleville, Minister of Music Cindy, and Pastor Ken. Receive our prayer, O God. Under your watch, not even a sparrow goes unnoticed. Safeguard plant and animal habitats threatened by melting glaciers, rising oceans, and receding coastlines. Amplify the voices of those calling for responsible stewardship of the earth, Earth's resources. Receive our prayer, O God. You give us mercy. Our world is enduring violence and destruction. Rescue your people in nations experiencing conflict or crisis. Thwart the efforts of those who sow chaos and terror and guide those working to bring about peace and reconciliation. Be with those who safeguard the world, including Parker Stansel, Cody and Marina Crawford, Cynthia Rudisill, Joel Taggart, Julia Eric, and Seth Donkey. Receive our prayers, O oh God. You give us mercy. You have counted even the hairs on our heads. Reassure anyone experiencing poverty, homelessness, unemployment, or exploitation that every life has value. Look favorably upon all who struggle, especially Veronica Barson, Bob Bolton, Sharon Bolton, Cherie Clements, Pat Wales DePew, Bob and Bonnie Ayer. Lisa Golnick, Tina Kemper, Norma Ludlow, Martha Mizak, Lisa Nuremberg, Abby Osborne, Karina Palmer, Ricky Palmer, Sherry Palmer, Annette Polhowski, Kathy Pulitz, Teresa Strutman, Al Troop, and Erica Wood. Answer us, for your steadfast love is good. Receive our prayer. O oh God. Even when we experience rejection, your love invites us to new life. Lift up anyone who feels shunned or excluded on account of their gender, race, sexual orientation, gender identity, national origin, or any other human distinction. Make your people one. Receive our prayer. O oh God, all who have died with Christ also live with him. Bless those who are traveling, give them guidance and safety. We give thanks for all the saints whose faithful confession inspired our own discipleship and raise us with them to eternal life. Receive our prayer, O God. Give us mercy. Receive our prayers and answers, O God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
for the talents we are given to share and for this bread and wine. Transform us in the body of Christ that may be on this food and drink. Our lives may reflect your generosity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of Christ's peace with each other. Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave things they were all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his acts of healing, his body given up, and his victory over death, he awaited that day when all the people of the earth will come to the river to enjoy the tree of life. Send your spirit upon us in this meal as grain scattered on the hillside become one bread, so that your church be gathered from the ends of the earth, that all may be fed with the bread of life in your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God invites you to this table of bounty. Come, the banquet is ready. Thanks be to God.
great love. Through the living and by the signs of your grace, may we hunger for your reign of justice, and may we thirst for your way of peace. The we of our Lord forevermore. Amen. One brief mission minute that hasn't made bulletin wanted to let you know that Green Street is inviting us to Vacation Bible School. It will be for us July 10th, 11th, and 12th. We hope that you are able to participate in that. There is contact information that we can give you and share with you uh, for that. So see me after church if you're interested in helping or um, sending a grandchild or perhaps even a great-grandchild. Wanted to also share with you that um, we are getting ready for our annual meeting. So there are a few what I call preview packets of the annual report sitting out there on the table. So if you want one, please by all means take one. Uh, do not hesitate. It's mostly right. I think the budget is still wrong. That is in there. But it's wrong because we're adding a few dollars more because of, um, but we can't do that or haven't done that because it's not been officially accepted um, by anybody, I don't, I don't believe. Um, so what we have is a almost ready version of the budget. So it's very close. We're talking, if I did the math right, $210 difference. Okay, that's what we're talking about. But um, that has not been approved to go into the budget yet. So that I don't understand, unless it's exactly, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. So anyway, so it's a, a preliminary, and you will find no um, uh, nomination, quote, slash what will turn into the ballot yet. That is not ready at all. So. Um, in fact, the one I saw was false. It said uh, we needed a, a one-term treasurer, and I know that's not true because she has agreed to stay on, so uh, Linda has. So um, I just said, we'll just not give that out because it's not even complete, and it's even wrong, to be honest. So all that prattling along to just say, pick one up if you want one. And finally, uh, time and talent inventory is there. Uh, deadline is this coming week. So uh, please fill one out if you haven't done so already. That will help us in the ministry of Grace Lutheran Church. Finally, two, oh, two, well, okay. Two, two things to mark on your calendar. The auto show on July 30th and one that made it in but we don't know the date for absolutely sure, is the um, Serial City Concert Band. We think it's August 7th. We've also heard August 20th. So there you go. But we'll know for sure down the road. Cindy. All right, first of all, if you're interested in partaking, partaking in the music leadership for the auto show on July 30th, stay tuned for um, rehearsals information. The other thing is that sending him today is new for us, though if you listen to Christian radio, you may be familiar with it. I will play through the refrain and then sing with you as best I can in the verses as well. Are there any other mission minutes or announcements to be made? Seeing none, I invite us to arise in body or spirit for the blessing down on page 13. God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine, grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.